1820. It was in 1820. And, and the Missouri Compromise said this. The Missouri Compromise said, look, all of the territory that was acquired as a result of the Louisiana Purchase, that is north of the 3630 line, slavery will not allow to be, be spread there. Slavery can't go there. Congress passed that legislation. The Congress of the United States banned slavery in the territories. Now remember, Southerners said, you can't do that. That, that, that banning slavery in the territories is, is not constitutional. Well, here's the thing. They did it in 1820. And that law was on the books for 34 years. For 34 years, the territory that was north of the 3630 line, slavery was banned there. Now, in the Kansas-Nebraska Act, would divide the remaining territory into two parts, Kansas and Nebraska. And in that remaining territory, it would be open to slavery on the basis of popular sovereignty. Meaning that if the people decided that they wanted slavery there, they could have it. Now, that would require the repeal of the Missouri Compromise, which it did, which created, in Douglas's words, a hell of a storm. Northerners, now, you, you might say, well, why? Well, remember this whole idea that, that slavery was going to spread everywhere. Look, it starts with, you know, repealing the Missouri Compromise and spreading slavery to, to, um, to um, um, this new Nebraska and Kansas territory. And then, if you even think of it from a northern vantage point, once they do this, then they try everything they can to get slavery in Kansas. Then a southern dominated Supreme Court has the Dred Scott decision, which opens slavery to everywhere. And now what's next? What's next? How much further will they go in order to spread slavery? But this is why Kansas, Nebraska is so inflammatory to, to some northerners, that look, this land had been won for freedom, and now we've got to give it back. It passes, but the, the, the um, um, the issue then goes to, to, um, to, to Kansas, where there is this great fighting in Kansas over, over whether or not you know, the legislature would allow slavery. And it looked like the national government, under Pierce and Buchanan, was supporting slavery in Kansas, despite the fact that the people didn't want it. And remember, we said that it eventually culminates in, in kind of John Brown's retaliatory raid for the sacking of Lawrence, and, you know, Brown, you know, I mean, that's another interesting thing, you know, um, you know, we were talking today, and no one cares about it, because everybody just cares about what's on the test, I'm sure of that, but when you talk about, you know, Brown as a terrorist, was that an act of terrorism? When you take sort of innocent lives, you know, the pro-slavery people that they pulled out of their homes and hatcheted it in half, you know, in retaliation for something that they were not directly involved with, to get an effect, to get attention, is, is, that, is that terrorism or is it fighting? <coughs> I mean, that's the ambiguity of that. It's kind of interesting. It's interesting to me. But I lead a pretty boring life. Um, you know, so, so, so anyways, um, you know, bleeding Kansas spills over into the floor of the United States Senate with the, the Preston Brooks and Sumner affair, right? And that leads into the election of 56, where Buchanan is elected to the presidency on a platform of popular sovereignty. Cass was for popular sovereignty. Pierce was for popular sovereignty. Buchanan is popular sovereignty. Remember, Pierce and Buchanan win the presidency as northerners supporting popular sovereignty, leaving the issue of slavery up to the people that go there. But eventually, the South is going to demand more. They're going to demand more in 60, where they want Douglas to abandon popular sovereignty. Now, remember also that, um, that um, Buchanan wins the election in, in 56. And for the first time, the newly formed Republican Party bursts onto the scene. Oh my goodness, the hour is late. We must wrap this up right now because the hour is late and the kids have to go and do what they do. Um, you know, the Republican Party bursts onto the scene, but in that election there really are three candidates. You know, there is, there is Buchanan the Democrat, Fremont the Republican, and Fillmore the Know Nothing. And remember, the Know Nothings made, they were the people who wanted to organize a political party on the basis of nativism. 
right? America for Americans. The Republican Party was on the basis of stopping the spread of slavery into the territories. Well, then, you know, um, um, you.